So today we will discuss basic factory basic factory methods. So we will just focus here only on factory methods that are usually used in business calculus for business or any other lower classes. So we are not going to be getting involved in any other factoring but basic factoring methods. So factoring. So factoring means writing a number or an expression as multiplications of two or more numbers or expression. Now, for example, let's say I have 27. So we could write this as 3 times 9 or you could even write this as 3 times 3 times 3. So either you could write as multiplication of two factors or even three factors. Now most of the time when you are multiplying expressions, we like to know as much as possible, in other words, completely factoring. For example, if I have 2x to the third power minus, let's say, 2x, now this could be written as 2x times x squared minus 1. Now, and we will talk about how to factor this. However, we can understand if I distribute this, 2x times x squared, I will get 2x cubed, 2x times 1, which is 2x. Now, we can also extend this as, as 2x times x minus 1 times x plus 1, knowing later on we will talk about it anyway, knowing x minus 1 times x plus 1, will make up to x squared minus 1. So whenever, for our purpose, whenever we factor something, we like to factor as much as possible or completely factoring. So we don't leave it at this step. We will rather go up to this stage. Now illustrating, let, to illustrate how to factor, we'll talk about different methods, at least some basic methods. The first method I'm, is called common factors. That is simply Recognizing 5 times 2x minus 3, for example, equals 10x minus 15. Now we know this is a dis use, if we use the distributive property, 5 times 2x is 10x, 5 times 3 is 15, or 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Now coming from here to here is called factoring. Here what we did was, we looked at numbers or expressions that are common between these two. Now, both expressions here, or both numbers here, could be divided by 5. So, if you divide both by 5, you will have 2x minus 3. And since we divided by 5, we write 5 here. So, if I multiply 5 times 2x minus 3, we will get 10x minus 15. So, going from this 10x minus 15 to 2, 5, minus, 5 times 2x minus 3 is called the method of common factors. So, let's look at some examples to illustrate this idea of common factors. So, first of all, let's look at this example, 10x squared minus 15x. Now, if you look at both 10x squared and 15x, we will have to think about what what are the common factors between these two, or in other words, what numbers or expressions that divides both. Now, if you look at the numbers first, 10 and 15, both could be divided by 5. Now, if you look at the variables, x squared and x, both could be divided by x. So, in other words, both expressions here, 10x squared and the 15x, could be divided by 5x. If I divide both by 5x, 10x, 10 divided by 5 is 2, then if you take away one of the x from x squared, you are going to be left with an x. Minus, of course, now 5 divided by, and 15 divided by 5 is 3, and of course we already divided this by x, so we will have an answer 5x times 2x minus 3. So this method is basically called common factors. Now we can extend this to a little bit further, and let's look at this example here. We have, let's say, 6a squared 
bx minus 3a b squared y. Now again, we have two terms here, and both terms have some numbers, some, some numbers or expressions that are common. Now if you look at the numbers first, both numbers could, could be divided by 3. Then if you look at the a, we could be able to take an a out, and the b, you can take one b, that's about it. In other words, both terms could be divided by 3a, 3 times ab. So if I divide the first term by 3 times ab, I will have 3 times 2 is 6, and we have a taken away, but I still have an a left over, and we have taken the b, so there is no t b a left here, but however, there will be an x remaining, minus, if I did 3 by 3 is 1 time, we don't need to write the 1, however, since I have taken the a, there is no a left over, but out of the b squared, I only took 1b, so there is going to be one more b left over, and the y. So this is another example talking about factoring, I mean common factors. Let's get another look at another example. Here we are looking at some expression that we can be taken out as common rather than terms. So let's say we have 12 times 2x plus 1 squared times x plus 3 plus 18 times 2x plus 1 times x plus 3 to the second power. Now, here we have a lot of, ter lot of terms or numbers can be pulled out. For example, 12 and the 18 could be divided by 6. And 2x plus 1 to the second power, and 2x plus 1, that is 1, 2x plus 1, it, that is common. And if you look at x plus 3 and x plus 3 squared, there is 1x plus 3 you can pull out. So if you take out 6 and 1 of those 2x plus 1 and 1 of those x plus 3 from each of those expressions, I'll be left with 2 times, because 2 times 6 is 12, and I took 2x minus 2x plus 1, so I still have one of those 2x plus 1, and that's all is left over from this first term. The second term, I will, first of all, I'll put a plus, 18 divided by 6, which is 3 times. I have taken all of this 2x plus 1, however, I'll be left with 1x plus 3. All you have to do now is to distribute the 2s and the 3s to this expression, making it 4x plus 2 plus 3x plus 9. And combining like terms, I will have 7x plus 11. And of course, we have the other factors that we already did. We'll have 6 times 2x plus 1 and x plus 3. So this is an example of taking common factors or common terms as well as expressions. Finally, let us look at one more example in, for this method. So let's say I have 5x times x minus 2 minus 3x squared times x minus 2. Now, once again, x minus 2 is a common factor, and also you should be able to take an x which is common between these two expressions. So if I take an x out and x minus 2, I will be left with 5 here minus 3x because we have x squared. I took 1x, so there remains one more x. So let's talk about the next method. I call that as difference of squares. So let's look at that method here talking about difference between two squares. So this will have the format like x squared minus y squared equals x minus y times x plus y. Now I'm not going to go through how to find these factors. However, you have to recognize if I foil x minus y and x plus y, I will get x squared minus y squared. So what that means is, if I factor x squared minus y squared, I will have x minus y times x plus y. So this idea can be used to, so, to factor 
some of those expressions. So let's look at uh, my first example under this method. It says, let's say, 9x squared minus 25y squared. Now, if you look at both terms carefully, 9x squared could be written as 3x times 3x, which is 3x to the second power, minus 5y, 5y times 5y, which is 5y squared. Now, this belongs to this type. Now, because we have two squares and there is a difference between them. So, if you have a situation like that, using the idea that we have before, it the answer to the factors of this will be then 3x minus 5y times 3x plus 5y. By the way, the order of writing these factors are not our concern. In other words, you could write this as 3x plus 5y times uh, 3x minus 5y. So the order is immaterial. Just like you know, if you write 5 times 5, 5 times 3, which is 15, or 3 times 5, which is 15. So we don't care about the order here. So it's, let's look at another example, number 2, I call it. So let's say I have 80x to the 4th power minus 5y to the 4th power. Now, as you, the way we looked at before, both of these are not perfect squares. I know x to the fourth power you can write as a second power of something, y to the fourth power you can write as a second power of something. However, we cannot write 80 or the 5 as something as a perfect square. Now, anytime you have an expression, the first thing that you have to do is to look for common factors. Do we have any common factors between these two terms? Now, if you look at 80 and 5, both numbers could be divided by 5. So if I take the 5 as a common factor, I'll have 5 times 16 makes 80, x to the 4th power minus y to the 4th power. Now, now we can think about square numbers. So 16 is 4 times 4, x to the 4th power could be thought as x squared times x squared, y to the 4th power could be thought as y squared times y squared. So if that's the case, we could write this as 5 times 4x squared to the second power minus y squared to the second power. Now we could use the idea of difference of squares. So we have 5 already times 4x squared minus y squared times 4x squared plus y squared. Now, we had to com factor completely. This 4x squared plus y squared do not have any factors. However, since we have a minus in between, we should see whether these two are perfect squares. Obviously, 4x squared could be written as 2x times 2x, and y squared could be written as y times y. So if you thought it like that, this 4x squared minus y squared can be written as 2x minus y times 2x plus y and of course times 4x squared plus y squared. So this is the complete factorization of 80x to the fourth power minus y, fourth, y to the fourth power. Finally also under this method we will look at another example here. Let me call it number 3. Uh, 3x minus 2 squared minus 2x minus 1 squared. Now, if you look at it a little bit more carefully, we have two expressions and they have second powers on it. So, in other words, we could think this as our x and this as our y. So, if that's the case, using the idea that we have before, we could write this as 3x minus 2 minus 2x minus 1 times 3x minus 2 plus 2x minus 1. So if you take away all those, all of those negatives, I mean, parentheses, you'll have 3x minus 2 minus 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2 plus 2x minus 1. 
So finally, we'll, if you combine like terms, I'll have x minus 1 times 5x minus 3. Now, once you get to this stage, you also have to look and see if there is any common factors. For example, instead of 3, if I had 5, I would have taken the 5 out and put it out here and take a common factor. So the next method is I'm going to call that as method 3 is factor by grouping. So in other words, here we group the terms and factor. So let me illustrate this with at least one or two examples. The first example is, let's say I have 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 4. Now if you look at this expression, you don't have any number or letters or, or terms can be pulled out as a common factor. So what we do is we break this whole expression into two groups. One group obviously is 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 4. So the first group is 3x cubed minus 2x squared. The other group is 6x minus 4. This method is called grouping. Now, the first group, if you look at it a little bit more carefully, I will be able to take x to the second power as a common factor. If I did take x to the second power as a common factor, I have 3x minus 2 will be left over here. Plus, now if you look at 6x and negative 4, I will be able to pull out the 2 and write 3x minus 2. Now, if you notice a little bit more carefully, 3x minus 2 is a common thing between these two terms. So I will be able to pull this one out as a common factor, and you'll be left with x squared plus 2. So the factors of 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 4 are 3x minus 2 and x plus 2, x squared plus 2. Let's me go with one more example of this type. So let's say I have 4x cubed minus 8x squared minus x plus 2. Now, when you are grouping into two groups, so the first group will be 4x cubed minus 8x squared. However, when you put a negative sign here, you have to be a little careful because when I distribute the negative sign, I should get negative x plus 2. So, so if you write x here, of course, negative times x is negative x. However, this will change to a negative sign because if I distribute the negative sign, I will have negative times negative is positive. So you have to be a little careful when you have this term, third term, as a negative sign, you make sure you change the sign afterwards when you are putting parentheses. After this, you go with the same idea that you had before. We talked about it. So if you took at this first term, I will be able to take 4x squared as a common factor. And that leaves us with x minus 2. And if you look at these x and negative 2, there is no factor that is common between those two. However, to make our factoring easier, we could write 1 here. In other words, 1 times anything is the same number. So recognizing 1 times x, time x minus 2 is x minus 2, we write 1. Because that will make our life easier when you are factoring x minus 2 as a common factor. So when I take x minus 2 as common factor, I'm going to be left with 4x squared minus 1. Now we have to look a little bit more carefully and see whether this term could be factored again. Surely 4x squared could be written as 2x squared, 2x to the whole thing squared. So we could write this as differential squared because 1 is 1 squared. So if you think like that, final answer will be then x minus 2, 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. So the idea here is to look every term and see you have no more factors with those expressions. So once you get to that, you have completely factored the given expression. So next method, is I'm going to call that as method 4 anyway. So next method is factoring trinomials. Trinomials means the expression that involves three t terms. For example, like this. x squared minus 7x minus 18. 
Now we like to write this expression as multiplication of two expressions. Obviously, first of all, let's see the answer first and let's talk about how to find that answer. Of course, if you multiply x minus 9 times x plus 2, if you FOIL these two, I will get x times x, which is x squared, x times 2, which is positive 2x, and negative 9 times x is negative 9x minus 18. So if you combine like terms, I will have x squared minus 7x minus 18. So these two, first of all, we recognize these two factors are the factors of the given expression. Now the question is, how do we get from this trinomial to this x minus 9 times x plus 2? Many students, what they do is, when they get this expression, look at the last term, which is negative 18. We think about two factors of negative 18 that will make if you multiply those two, you get negative 18, but if you combine them, you're supposed to get negative 7. So if you think about factors of negative 18, obviously negative 9 and plus 2, will, if you multiply both numbers, you get negative 18, but if you add them together, you get negative 7. Once you have finalized this, the factors for the given expression can be written as x minus 9 times x plus 2. Now, this type of procedure can be done every time you have the x squared with coefficient 1. In other words, you have no number written in front of the x squared term, or in other words, the second power term. So this type of procedure could be done every time. So let's try one more question like this and talk about another method. So let's say I have x squared minus 2x. minus 8. Now here again, if you look at negative 8, there are several ways you can write negative 8. For example, you could write this as negative 8 times 1, or 1 times negative 8, or 2 times 4, negative 4, or 4 times negative 2 and such. But the factors that if you combine them that will make negative 2 are possibly negative 4 and positive 2. So if you multiply these two negative 4 times positive 2 you get negative 8. If you combine them you get negative 2. So once you have finalized those two terms it's a matter of writing them as factored form. So you have x minus 4 and x plus 2 as factors for this problem. Let's look at another example. I'm going to call this as example 3. Here we have 2x squared minus x minus 15. Now this problem is different than what we discussed before because we have a coefficient attached to x to the second power term. So to do this, there are you can do trial and error if you like, or you can think about a method. So let's think about trial and error first. If you are doing trial and error, we have to think about what two x terms, if you multiply, you get 2x squared. Obviously, 2x and the x, if you multiply, you get 2x squared. Now, negative 15, there are a lot of options. However, when you FOIL, you need to get negative x as the combination of the x terms. So the right combination is plus 5 and minus 3. Now, you have to play with these numbers. Once you get experience with this procedure, uh, you will be able to do it quickly. But we will talk about the method anyway if you are not familiar with how to factor like these two numbers. Now, first of all, we'll make sure it is the right, it, these are the right factors for the given expression. So if you FOIL this, we have 2x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 15. So if you combine these middle terms, I have 2x squared minus x minus 15. So at least we are convinced that the factors of 2x squared minus x minus 15 are 2x plus 5 and x minus 3. Now I'm going to illustrate a method for those people who are not familiar with trial and error method or struggling with factoring this type of expressions. So what we do is we multiply the two and the negative 15 first. So if you multiply 2 and negative 15, I get negative 30. Now, now we have to look for, as we did before, we have to look for multiplication of two numbers 
where if I multiply, I get negative 30, but if I combine them together, I get negative 1. So obviously, we can think about negative 6 and positive 5. Obviously, if I multiply negative 6 times 5, which is negative 30, and negative 6 and 5, positive 5 is negative 1. Once we are finalized, we add x to this. Now, we know if I combine these two terms, I will get the middle term. Now, from the original expression, what we are missing are the 2x squared and minus 15. So, if you really notice this, what I wrote here, uh, this 2x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 15 is exactly the same as the original expression. So, we will write the 2x squared minus x minus 15 as 2x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 15. Now we use the method of making groups. So the first group will be 2x squared minus 6x. The second group is 5x minus 15. So if you look for common factors, for the first group, we will have 2x as our common factor. Then we'll be left with x minus 3. Now plus, if I look at the second expression, which is 5x minus 15, and if I take 5 out as a common factor, I will have x minus 3. Now again, x minus 3 is our common factor here, so if I take out x minus 3, you will notice 2x plus 5 is another factor. So we will, in fact, get to the right factors. Again, as I said, we could write any order that we want, because it's multiplication. So this method is an alternative method if you don't know how to use trial and error. So let's look at another problem and see how it works. So number four. So let's say I have 14x squared minus x minus 3. Now, as I said before, 14 times negative 3, which will be negative 42. We are looking for two numbers to make negative 5, negative 1. So we'll have negative 6x plus 7x. That will give you the negative. So, so let me make this to become plus. No, it doesn't matter, but let me make the original problem to look like big plus so that you get a positive x. If it was a negative x, then I would have put a negative with a 7x and the positive with a 6x. There's nothing going to change. Since I wrote this fact, I don't want to change this here. So if I did that, so it's going to look like 14x squared minus 6x plus 7x minus 3. Now, again, we'll make two groups. 14x squared minus 6x is one group plus 7x minus 3 is another group. Then again, if you look at the first group, I will be able to take... 2x as a common factor, then I have 7x minus 3, plus, as I said before, 7x minus 3 do not have any common factor, so we write 1 here, thinking one time anything is the same expression. So if I take 7x minus 3 as my common factor, then I will be left with 2x plus 1. So this procedure can be used whenever we have problems where <coughs> the coefficient of the second power term, which is x squared, is not 1. So let me complete this discussion with another problem, number 5, example number 5. Let's say I have x to the fourth power minus 5x cubed minus 14x squared. Now, if you really look at it a little bit more carefully, all these terms have common factor. The first thing that you have to do any time you have to factor it, any time you are factoring, is to take the common factor out. So if I took, take x squared as a common factor, I will be left with x squared minus 5x minus 14. Now, we have to factor x squared minus 5x minus 14. Obviously, you know, negative 14 could be written as two numbers which is negative 7 and positive 2 to give you negative 14. So I finally we might be able to write x times x minus 7 times x plus 2. So these are the factors. Now let's talk about the next method. I'm calling that as method 5. This is difference of cubes or sum of cubes. So this works with these following facts. 
So if you have, let's say, x to the third power minus y to the third power, the factors of this are x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. Now, if I have x cubed plus y cubed, the factors are x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. So we, we may be able to use these factors, these ideas to find factors of either sum of cubes or difference of cubes. By the way, it is worth noticing that if you have x squared plus y squared, that does not have any factors. However, we have factors for x squared minus y squared. Now, let's just give you one more example because we don't meet this type of things too, too many of them in our business calculus for business class or any other lower classes. So, however, let's just illustrate this through one example. Let's say I have 125 x cubed minus 27. Now, if you notice, 125 could be written as 5x to the third minus 27 could be written as 2 to the, 3 to the third. Now, so for our purpose, the 5x could be considered a term to the third minus 3 to the third power. Now, if I use the first expression, that's the one is about difference of cubes. So it could be written as 5x minus 3, which is like x minus y, times 5x squared, which is like x squared, plus 5x times y plus y squared, oh, meaning 5x times 3 times 3 squared. So finally you will have 5x minus 3 times 25 x squared plus 15 x plus 3 times 3 which is 9. So let me also do one more example to illustrate the sum of cubes. So let's say I have x cubed plus 8. Now 8 could be written as 2 to the third power so we are looking at sum of two cubes. Again, now this time we could use the second expression here. If we use that, we will have x plus 2 times x squared plus 2 times x, minus, sorry, minus 2 times x plus 2 squared, which is 4. So only thing that you have to notice is if you have a plus here, you may have a minus with the middle term with the three term expression. Now if you have a minus here as previously we had and you'll have a plus all the way with the three x three term expression but the first factor should have the negative sign. So we'll conclude the basic factoring method with these examples.